Okay, we're live. Any questions from page 44, lesson two, that you would like me to go over? From page 44, lesson two. So number two, three, four, and five, six A, eight, those all went well? Yeah. I would love to do six A. 6A, this is going to sound insulting, 6A is actually so easy that it's tough, and I'll show you what I mean, okay? If I read it, first of all, lovely chart. Uh, by the way, what's the biggest province? Look at the chart. Which province has the biggest area? Is none of it technically a province or not? They changed the rules after I was in high school. Do we call none of it a province, or does it have a different name? Okay, so back to my question. Sorry, none of it. Which is the biggest province? Quebec? Okay. Then Ontario. Then is BC third? We're the third largest province, the fifth largest the fifth largest thing, province and or territory. Okay. Um Emily, question A says, how many times larger is the total area of Quebec than the total area of New Brunswick? The first thing I did, Emma, is I said, well, total area Quebec there's the total area of Quebec. And there's the total area of New Brunswick. I did that. I underlined it or I highlighted it. You okay with that step? The real question is, what the heck do I do with those? Whenever they give me a question and I don't know the answer and it's big yucky numbers, one of the great strategies that I can teach you is I fall back and use easier numbers. Are you ready? Joe has five bucks. You have ten bucks. How many times more do you have than Joe? How do you get a two from a five and a ten? What mathematical equation or operation could you do with a 5 and a 10 that would give you an answer of 2? You just answered the question here, by the way. I'm going to go 1,542,056 1, divided by 72,908. I asked exactly the same question, how many times larger, but I fell back and used easier numbers. That's a great strategy. You knew the answer, actually. You just didn't know you, you, knew, you knew what to do. As soon as I made it easier, I saw you look at me like, oh, Felix, that's boring. You're wasting my time. Okay, That's why I meant by this question is so easy. That's tough. Good strategy. My math 12, I'm trying to teach them that one all the time, too. Uh, I have no idea what that works out to, and I want to the nearest whole number. So, okay, that's how many times bigger is it. Any others from the homework? Can you all turn to, I think it's page 54. 54, I think it's a blank page. Is page 54 a blank page? Ha ha, good. I'm going to do some notes there. I don't think the textbook does a great job of this. In fact, i got to be honest. Right now, in my mind, I'm giving unit one with this textbook barely a C. I think it tried. Any, anyhow, you guys don't care. You're just doing the homework. Um, so page 54, it's a blank page. And what I'd like you to do at the top as a little heading here is write down S-A and B. Please excuse the interruption. This is for all grade 12 that need a retake done. Please now proceed to the small gym. And also, this is last call for all students and all staff to have your picture taken. So please proceed now to the small gym, all grade 12s, and any remaining staff for the last call and students. S, A, and B. Any grade 12 here? No? Good. S, A stands for surface area. V stands for volume. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the simplest shape possible. Actually, the real simplest shape is a sphere, but that's a bit yucky. We're going to look at a box. So I'd like you to draw roughly a three-dimensional small box over on the left-hand side of your page. Mine's going to, I'm going to cheat, by the way. Mine's going to look like this. Insert, uh, where's my, oh, draw. And I'm going to go like that. Right-click, copy. Right click, paste, and then I'm going to go.
Draw a three-dimensional box. You guys see where I'm headed? Right click. There's a deep button on this thing, isn't there somewhere? Shapes. Maybe not. There's my 3D box. And then what I'd like you to do next to it is try and draw. Hang on, let's try that again, Mr. Duke. Right click, copy, click over here, paste. Try and draw a box that's the same dimensions looking but larger. In other words, same angle. Make it similar. Same shape but bigger. If you can, try and be roughly accurate. And here's where I get a little bit clever. Ink. White ink. And now that becomes a little dotted line. See that? And that should be a dotted line too, shouldn't it? And that should be a dotted line. And that should be a dotted line. There, now it really looks 3D. Oh, huh? Oh, hey. Okay. And when you've done drawing that, it doesn't have to be great. We're not going to use this as our notes. This is where we're going to explain the concept, and we'll go to the actual notes. Look up when you're done. Still got a few of you. It's not a work of art. Oh, get it, the perspective angle, right, whatever. We're good? Okay. Surface area and volume of a box. I'd like you to imagine that this is the box that you drew, but please imagine that there are no bumps on this. So right now there's a lid with a ridge right here. Imagine it's perfectly smooth. I couldn't find a perfectly smooth cardboard box that was unopened. Surface area asks how much wrapping paper you would take to cover this. In fact, you know what the surface area of this box is? It's this side plus this side. Wait a minute. Are these two sides the same? You know what? It's this side times 2 plus this side times 2 plus this side times 2. Two ends, top and bottom, two sides. As an equation, surface area as an equation is, by the way, my abbreviation for surface area is SA. It's, let's label this box, shall we? L, actually, let's call that width, length, height. Surface area is well what shape is this that's facing you? No, no, th this. What shape is just this? The ends of the letter R rhymes with rectangle. Rectangle. Right? What's the area of a rectangle? Come on, we've done this. How do I find the area of a rectangle? Okay, it's going to be length times width times 2 plus length times height times 2 because there's two sides, right? Plus width times height times 2. It's this. 2LW plus 2LH plus 2. Uh, which two sides am I missing? HW. As long as you get all of them, I don't care what order you write them in, but you've got to get all of them. Okay. Volume, for which I use the letter V. Does anybody know what the volume of a box is? Well, first of all, what does it mean? When I say what's the volume of this box, 
I'm asking you how much water can it hold? Whoop, balance, balance it. How much water can it hold? How much can you fit in there? What's the equation for the volume of a box? Anybody know? Yep. Length times width times height. L W H. By the way, for a candy, by raising your hand, I've been calling this a box. What's the fancy math word for this? Does anybody know? Yeah? That's one of them that gets you a candy. There's an even more stupid, obscure one. It's actually called a parallel pipe which is a stupid name for a box. If it's okay with you, I'm going to use the word box. And when I use the word box, what I mean, Jeremiah, is something like this. Because there are cardboard boxes that aren't necessarily rectangular, but let's pretend when I say the word box, that's what we mean. Okay? Candy for your lady. Let's add some numbers then. Suppose I told you that the width was 2, the length was 5, and the height was 4. And let's put a great big number 1 next to this box. We'll call it box number 1. What is the surface area of box number one? Well, it's going to be 2 times 5 times 2 plus 2 times 5 times 4 plus 2 times 4 times 2. On your calculators, or in your head, I don't care which, but most of you, on your calculators, you can type that in in one straight great big line. Your calculators will do the bet mass for you. What is the surface area of box number one? What do you get? Sorry? 76. Anybody else? Yes? 76. What are the units? Well, let's go back to our diagram. And let's call these uh, meters, meters, and meters. What are the units? I'll give you a surface area. I gave you a stupid rhyme with area to remember units for area. And this still works for surface area. What are the units? S meters what? Squared. Meters squared. I said you want a dumb thing to remember? Square area, area. Stan, believe it or not, I still use that. Okay, so far so good. What's the volume of box number one? Well, that's going to be length times width times height. It's going to be 5 times 2 times 4, 10 times 4. I can do this in my head, I think. What's 10 times 4? 40. What are the units for volume? Well, Meters. Meters what? Cubed. You know how you can remember that is meters to the third power? How many different variables are there in this equation? Three. That's one way to remember. Or you can just remember a cube is a box and oh but cubed. Nothing profound so far. In fact, Sam, I would argue I think that's math eight or nine. The surface area and volume. Okay. Now have a linear scale factor of three to one. We're going to have a linear scale factor of three to one. What that's going to do is that that's going to change my width, my length, and my height. If I have a linear scale factor of three to one, if this one is bigger and the ratio is 3 to 1, my original width is 2. What's my new width? Math. 6. What's my new length? Emily, when you're done yawning, if my ratio is 3 to 1, if my scale factor is 3 to 1, what's my length? 15. Good recovery. And what's my new height? 12. 
And what I want to ask myself is, if I triple, if I add a scale factor of three to ones here, if I triple everything, will my surface area be tripled? Will my volume be tripled? We're going to find out. I'm going to, in my high-tech numbering, call this box number two. Surface area of box number two is going to be twice, what's the length? 15, 6, and 12. 15 times 6 plus 2, 15 times 12 plus 2, 6 times 12. There's my, no, not 6, yeah. There's my twice the length LW plus 2 LH plus 2 HW. Now, Sierra said she thinks we're going to be three times as big. Three times as big as this would be 210 plus 18 would be 228. Do you get an answer on your calculator since I know you're following along? Do you get an answer of 228? Nobody say it out loud. Sierra's going to confirm or deny this for us. What do you get? 684, is that right, folks? No, people are nodding. Yeah, have some confidence. You're smarter than you look. I mean, well, make that a compliment, okay? And what would the units be? Uh, meters squared. Okay. Here's the question we want to ask ourselves then. My linear scale factor was Sierra 3 to 1. What's my surface area? scale factor. Well, what's my new area of my big shape? Divided by, what was my original surface area? When you go 684 divided by 76, by what scale factor did the area increase when we added a linear scale factor of 3 to 1? What'd you get? 9? Or are you Germans, is Benedict saying no? Nine? Huh? Nine? No. That's pretty good. No? Yes? No? Eh? A little German in there for you? Nine is the German word for it. Anyways, back to here now. Um, nine times. Nine to one. Three to one became nine to one. Can you see where that nine came from looking at that three? Do you see how we might have been able to turn a three into a nine? What mathematical operation does that? More specific, what type of multiplication? It's got a fancy, fancy word. Marcus. Square. square. And you know what? Last lesson, we said that area ended up being linear squared, square area. Surface area also ends up being squared, square area. So that whole area, square area, stupid thing that I gave actually really works. If you know the linear scale factor, the surface area scale factor is going to be 9 to 1. Okay. What about the volume of shape number two? Now that's going to be length times width times height. That's going to be 15 times 6 times 12. What's the new volume? This I can't do in my... Well, maybe I can. 15 times 6, uh, 60 and 5, 90 times 12, uh, 1,080. Someone double check me. I could be wrong. Woohoo! Units, centimeters, cubed. Meters cubed. Thank you, Jordan. Candy for you later. Don't let me forget. What's my scale factor here? What's my volume scale factor? Well, if I go new volume divided by, what was the original volume? Four. Jordan, what do I get? Do I get 27? Hmm. What would turn a 3 into a 27? Nine is correct, except 
That's not the mathematical operation I'm looking for. Let me see if I can walk you to it. As it turned out, area ends up being your linear squared. 3 squared is 9. Volume ends up being your linear cubed. Cubed. This is actually 3 cubed. Turns out volume, if you, for example, double the length, double the width, and double the height, if you had a linear scale factor of 2, what's 2 cubed? What's 2 to the third power on your calculator or in your head? What's 2 times 2 times 2? Uh, the volume scale factor is going to be 8 times bigger. Or, Sam, if you multiply the length, width, and height by 4, a linear scale factor of 4, your area is going to go up by 4 squared, 16. Your volume is going to go up by 4 cubed. 4 times 4 times 4, which is what? I don't know, is it? 4 times 4 is 16 times 4. 64. Okay. That's today's lesson. We want you to realize that surface area is related to the linear scale factor because it's the square. But the new one, Emily, is volume is related to the linear scale factor by being the cube. Can you think of an easy way that I could remember that volume is the cube of the linear? Is there somewhere maybe in volume in the units perhaps where there might be a little reminder that as it turns out volume is the cube of the linear? Can you find some easy way that I could maybe remember that volume is the cube of the linear? It would really be convenient if there was some easy way. You haven't figured it out yet? Can't help you. Now let's go to the lesson. Lesson 7, please. Page 47. And get your calculators out all of you and we may be finding a couple of new buttons for some of you specifically cube root and square root and things like that so page 47 once again it wants us to fill in this chart we're not going to fill in all of it instead we're going to look for some shortcuts we're going to look for some patterns we're going to look for some hints ready Alex? you awake? here we go they filled in the first example for us they said Here's your original rectangle box. Surface area. Let's write over here just so we don't forget. Surface area equals 2LW plus 2LH plus 2HW. And volume equals LWH. Got your calculators handy? What they've done here, Joe, is they have uh, made up three numbers. They found the surface area for a box with those dimensions. They told you the scale factor of 2 or 2 to 1, which means the 3 is going to become a 6, the 5 is going to become a 10, and the 2 is going to become a, sorry, the 1 is going to become a 2. Then they found the new surface area by going here, and they said if you go new surface area divided by old surface area, you get an answer of 4. 2 squared! B. What's my scale factor? Can you read it to me, Boston? You know what my surface area scale factor is going to be? Square it. Boston, what's 1 squared? Yes. Over. What's 6 squared? I'm betting the answer is going to be that. Let's write down what we think the answer is, and let's prove it. How do I find a scale factor of 1 to 6, of 1 sixth? How do I reduce this by 1 sixth? Well, on my calculator, it's very simple. Get your calculators out. 
If I want to find one sixth of nine and one sixth of six and one sixth of twelve, I go nine times one divided by six. That's how you multiply by a fraction. Top number divided by the bottom number times whatever we're talking about. What is nine times one divided by six? Sorry? 1.5? So this rectangle is going to be 1.5 by... What's 1 sixth of 6? What's 6 times 1 divided by 6? 1 by... What's 1 sixth of 12? What's 12 times 1 divided by 6? That's my new rectangle with a scale factor reduction of 1 sixth. What's my original surface area? Well, my original surface area is going to be 2 times 9 times 6 plus 2 times 9 times 12 plus 2 times 6 times 12. Twice LW plus twice. LH plus twice HW. Courtney, what's my original surface area? Did you get 468? Didn't do it? Or did, did Oh, you didn't do it? Okay. Folks, you want to practice with your calculators. I have a feeling there's a bunch of... First of all, your test is actually not very far away. I only got one more lesson in this unit. I will not help you figure out your calculator on your test. In fact, if you ask me, Mr. Deck... How do I use this calculator? How do I do this on a test? It means a couple of things. Either, Marcus, you didn't do the homework. I don't care. Or you're dumb enough to bring a brand new calculator that you borrowed from a friend to a test. Either way, not only will I not tell you, the odds are very good. I'll stand next to you while you write the test and do an evil laugh. <laughs> Something like that. Did you get 468? Okay, what did you type? Your surface area, right? The quick way is it's going to be 2 times that times that plus 2 times that times that plus 2 times that times that. Am I wrong? Is it 600? What did you guys get for an answer? Hey, what goes here? Okay. Where's your calculator? Get it out. Where's your calculator? You got it out? Thank you. Where's your calculator? Got it out? Show me. Thank you. Taylor, you got one out? Okay. Follow along, boys and girls. I don't want to hear crickets chirping. Last block, I don't care. Suck it up a little bit. Is the answer 468 right here? Yes. Okay. If you didn't get that, I'll come help you later. Let's try this next one. It's going to be 2 times that times that plus 2 times that times that plus 2 times that times that. What's my new surface area? You get 13. No. Am I wrong? 13? Did you get 13? You're lying? Okay. Did you try it? No? I, I really hope that you can get these. I won't help you. If you're not trying right now, this is a chance for you to raise your hand. I'll come help you, and I won't make fun of you here. Believe me. Okay. Any luck? No? Okay, let me come watch what you're typing. Pause for a second. No? We need to figure this out. We can, too. Fair enough. I th is the answer 13? I need some confirmation. Yes, I got need some more people nodding. Now, if I go new area divided by old area, 13, new surface area, Joel. The new surface area divided by the original or old surface area of 468. Does that work out in lowest terms to 1 over 36, which we predicted, which I thought we'd get to a lot quicker until I had to tell so many of you to start pulling your calculators out. Let's try and pick the pace up a little bit, follow along, let's move along. 
Here is a four by eight by five rectangle box. What's its surface area? Can you go 2LW plus 2LH plus 2HW? Ready, kiddo? Here's what I would type. Ready? 2 times the first 2, 4 times 8, plus 2 times 4 times 5, plus 2 times 8 times 5. And do you get, woohoo, 184? 184. Now, my linear scale factor this time is 3 to 2. It's a fraction. How do I find 3 halves of 4? We answered this last class. How do I find 3 halves of 4? I take the 4, and what do I do with this? Times by Yes, thank you, Jordan. You're impressing me, despite the fact that you're wearing half of a hoodie. That's okay. His arms are cold, but then his body's warm. That's strangely more clever than I thought. I'm not used to that from you. Times by 3, divide by 2. You know what? I think the new one is going to be 6 by. And the 8 is going to become times by 3 divided by 2, a 12 by, and the 5 is going to become, whoop, didn't want to hit that, Mr. Duick. Times by 3 divided by 2, a decimal. Is that a yucky decimal? Not too bad, I'll live with it. 7.5. What's my new surface area? My new surface area is going to be, don't oh, quit hitting that, Mr. Duke. My new surface area is going to be 2 times 6 times 12 plus 2 times 6 times 7.5 plus 2 times 12 times 7.5. What'd you get for your surface area? 414? 414, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can. Can you press the go to button when it says syntax error, option number two? And the cursor. Sorry, it's taking a little longer than I wanted. 414. They want us to go new surface area divided by original surface area. They want us to go 414 divided by 184. And I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to make a prediction that this works out to 9 over 4. How did I get a 9 over 4? Squared, square. Square the top, square the bottom. Let's see. 9 over 4 is a decimal is that. 414 divided by 184 is a decimal is 414, Mr. Duick, type it right, divided by 184 as a decimal is 2.25. You know what? They are the same. So the whole point of this seven is to realize area, surface area, square the linear, and you have your area scale factor. Let's skip the last line. Let's go to the next one. Woohoo! But here we're going to cheat. Here's what I want you to realize. Because we've already filled in the dimensions and stuff on the previous chart. Taylor, what's my linear scale factor here? You know what my volume scale factor is going to be? It's going to be 1 over 6 cubed. which is going to be, what's 1 cubed on the top? What's 1 times 1 times 1? What's 6 cubed? Now, you need to find where your exponent button is. My exponent button is a little hat right here. I go 6 to the power of 3. You need to find where your y to the x exponent button thingy is. 
you need to somehow find how you can go six, press a button, hit a three, and get an answer of 216. If you can't find your exponents button, now is your chance to ask me. I'll show you where it is. I can find it in about two seconds. Everybody found it okay? Let's come help you. So, what's my linear scale factor here? Shay, just read it out to me. My volume scale factor is going to be 3 over 2 cubed. What's 3 to the third power? 3 times 3 times 3. 27 over what's 2 to the third power? 2 times 2 times 2. 8. Scroll up a tiny bit to this line here where it says complete surface area scale factor is equal to linear scale factor squared. Squared. Volume, scroll down to the bottom of the page, look down the bottom of the page. Volume scale factor is equal to linear scale factor cubed. Let's do a couple of examples and I can turn you loose. Turn the page. Page 48, Alex, is one of the pages I think that I would dog ear or post-it note or bookmark or do something. Because this is a summary of everything we've done so far this unit that involves measurement. It says linear scale factor. is a ratio, looks like A over B. It can describe an enlargement or a reduction, and you can find it by going the new length divided by the original length if they don't tell you the linear scale factor. Perimeter scale factor is also a ratio. It describes how many times to enlarge or reduce the perimeter of a figure, and you can calculate it by going new perimeter divided by old perimeter. And here's the key. The perimeter scale factor equals the linear scale factor. This is so much fun, Mr. Duick. Let's do another one. Oh, I shall. Area scale factor. What was the dumb rhyme I gave you for area? Square, area. Yeah. It's actually going to be, now you can calculate it by going new area divided by original area, or it's linear scale factor squared. If you knew the old, if you know the old one, multiply it by the linear scale factor squared. Surface area. Is how much wrapping paper? Sierra, it can be calculated by going new surface area divided by old surface area. And you can find the scale factor by going linear scale factor squared. It's also area square area. Volume! Not what you do on your stereo, but the mathematical concept. Volume. The volume scale factor is also a ratio. How can you calculate the volume scale factor? You can go new volume divided by old volume. Or it's equal to the linear scale factor cubed to the third power. And here as well is a lovely summary. This is what you absolutely need to know on the test. That if you know linear, you can find perimeter, the same. You can find the area scale factor, that's the linear scale factor squared. You can find the surface area scale factor, that's the linear scale factor squared. And you can find the volume scale factor, which is the linear scale factor cubed. Turn the page, or next page over. So where can we use this? Axis Globes Company manufactures globes. A little bit bigger than this. Its globes have a diameter of 30 centimeters. 
They want to enlarge one of these. They want to make a great big globe, and they want to make it have a diameter of 1.5 meters to put on the roof of their building. Okay. By the way, if the diameter is 30 centimeters, what's the radius? 15. If the diameter is 1.5 meters, what's the radius? 0.75 meters. Turn back to page 54, the blank page, please. This one. S, A, and V of sphere. Surface area and volume of a sphere. There's my sphere. I want to move it. What do we call that distance there? R for radius. I went to go see a pirate movie the other day, but I couldn't get in because it was rated R. No? Okay. It's two equations, and these are on the inside cover of your book, but I always like to talk about them. The surface area of a sphere and the volume of a sphere. These are really hard to figure out. In fact, they weren't proven for quite some time to be accurate. They suspected these were the equations because the answers were really close to this. But it took a long time. You needed calculus to prove this. Surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Don't ask me. The volume of a sphere is still 4, still pi, but it's r cubed, which doesn't surprise me because we said that volume was cubed, uh, all divided by 3. It's 4 pi r cubed over 3. Sometimes, Emily, instead of all over 3, you'll see them write it as 4 thirds pi r cubed. Regardless, you're going to go multiply, 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 divide by 3, however you want to write it. Back to our notes, please. In example A, it says, okay, the surface area and volume calculations of the globe with diameter 30 centimeters are shown below. They went 4 pi r squared. They went 4 pi times 15 squared. They got a surface area of 2,827.4 square centimeters. Ah! There you go. To get the volume, they went 4 times pi times 15 cubed divided by 3, and they got uh, sorry 14,137.2 centimeters. What they would like us to do is they would like us to calculate the surface area and the volume of this great big globe. I got a bit of a problem though. What are the units for the radius of the small globe? What are the units for the radius of the small globe, Joe? The units for the radius. Say it louder. No, don't say the number. The units only. What are the units for centimeters? What are the units for the radius of the big globe? I don't want to do that. 0.75 meters, how many centimeters is that? Here's a hint. Okay, they changed it to centimeters first. Let's find the surface area. So the surface area of the 1.5 globe is going to be 4 times pi times 0.75 squared. Now you need to find your pi button. You need to find your squared button. Give a graphing calculator, it's probably like this. 
for pi is usually second function, this thing right here, times 0.75 squared. I get 7.06858, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I put a 0.75 in like a complete meathead. Mr. Duick, not 0.75, but 75 centimeters. Let's try that again, Mr. Duick. Good gosh. Instead of a 0.75, Courtney, I said we want to use 75 centimeters. Let's do that. You get the same number, but the decimal's in a different place. You get 70,685.83571. Yes? If anybody can't get that, this is your chance, and I'll help you with your calculator. Everybody got that okay? Hmm, okay. I get, so, and they want to the nearest point one. So 70685.8. 70685.8. Units. Centimeters what? Area goes with what? Squared. Area square, area. Yeah. Let's also find the volume of the 1.5 meter dome, globe. That's going to be 4 times pi times 75 cubed all over 3. It's going to be 4 times pi times 75 to the third power divided by 3. And I get 1, 7... Six seven one four five point eight six five. Anybody else? No. Yes. One seven six. Seven one four five point nine. If everybody who didn't get that answer, I can happily help you get that answer. So your calculators all worked okay. What are the units? Centimeters what? Cubed. The volume is cubed. B says, use the above results to determine the scale factors. The linear scale factor, the area scale factor, and the volume scale factor. Let's find the linear scale factor. What's the new radius in centimeters? 75. What's the original radius in centimeters? Anyone? You have to read the question. What's the original radius in centimeters? Where did the 15 come from? You're right. Where is it? I don't, I don't, hey, yeah. How about even uh, right there? Woohoo! Screen froze? I lose signal for a second again? Come on, it's been doing so good. Go back. Okay. Is it back? Not yet, eh? Sorry about that. Little technical difficulties. Radius 15. So going to be 75 over 15. What was my linear scale factor? Someone type that in. By the way, folks, I generally look for some give and take and some participation. I don't care that it's last block and that you guys are tired and that girl's coming out of you. Suck it up and wake up. You're grade 11, kids. Let's go. Woo! -hoo! Or I'll get violent with my little air zooka, whatever I need to to help you stay awake. Did I hear five? I did hear a five. Thank you, Sam, my angel, joy of my heart. Now, what should the surface area scale factor be? If the linear is five, what should the surface area scale factor be? Should be five squared. What should the volume scale factor be if all goes well? Should be five cubed. Should be. Let's see. What's the new surface area right here? One four one three seven point two divided by what's the original surface area? 
two, eight. Sorry, Mr. Duick. Read this properly. Jeez, now you guys got me doing it. That's my fault. What's the new surface area? How about I use this number here? What's the new surface area? Seven, zero, six, eight, five point eight. What's the original surface area? Two, eight, two, seven point four. When you divide those, Shay, on your calculator, Shay, what do you get, Shay? And everybody. What was designed the calculator? Yeah. You can bring one. What do you get? Do you get 25? So this one works? Oh, now let's go volume over volume. New volume, which is 176745.9, divided by old volume, 14137.2. What do you get? What'd you get, Shay? 124.6. What's 5 cubed? You got a calculator. What's 5 cubed? 125? So did we get an answer really, really close to 125? Where'd the error come in? Well, we've rounded off. Okay? So this works as well. Thank you for the thumbs up. I'll give you one right back. Absolutely. What's the point, Jordan? If it's cubed, then it's volume, squared, surface area, or just plain old area, linear. C asks this. Show how to use the volume scale factor to determine the linear scale factor. Let's suppose I told you, let's suppose I told you that the volume scale factor was actually, uh, oh heck, suppose I told you that the volume scale factor was actually 343, and I said find the linear scale factor. If the volume scale factor was 343, how can you find the linear scale factor? What's that right there? Cubed. What's the opposite of cubing? How do you go backwards? Cube root. How do you cube root on your calculator? Find the cube root of 343 right now. Now on my graphing calculator, it's hit the math button. Option 4, cube root of 343. You should get 7 as an answer. If you can't find your cube root button, if you can't figure out how to type in a 343, and get a seven back. Call me now and I'll show you where it is. Okay. Courtney, here's what I would write. The linear scale factor is equal to the cube root of 343, which is seven. What if I wanted to use the volume to find the area scale factor? Here's the volume scale factor. Did I just find the linear, Danielle? Say yes. How can I use the linear to find the area? What's the relationship between linear scale factor? Ah. So the short answer is you can't use the, vol the volume to get there directly. Take the cube root of the volume scale factor to get the linear scale factor, and then square it to get the area scale factor. What is your homework? Number one, this lovely chart. All of it, yeah. Number two, this lovely chart. All of it, yeah. Number three A, three B, three C. Four A, four B, turn the page. I'll pause I'll pause there. Okay. Next class I will have a take home quiz for you. 
Believe it or not, we're technically done the unit. Right now, I'm looking at your test being towards the end of next week sometime. Thursday or Friday of next. I don't know if I have you guys Friday next week. I don't know. We'll find out. So you have the remainder of class. That took a lot longer to get through because people weren't... Hey, the faster you guys are on your calculator, the less time I'm sitting there waiting for us to type and find an answer. 